previously on The Seduction of Nora. The story begins when Nola finds a mysterious necklace that leads her into a series of strange events, ultimately pulling her by mermaids into the ocean. There, she discovers her lover Ninzem. Later, after Ninzem broke the rules of the mermaids due to his secret relationship with a human being, Nora. He is imprisoned by oceanic forces. As Nola navigates this underwater world, she learns of a dark power tied to the necklace. Facing great danger, Nola goes into labor, giving birth to a magical child. With the help of her maternal strength and determination, she escapes the ocean with Ninzem and their child, overcoming the powerful forces that sought to keep them apart. The tale explores themes of love, sacrifice, and resilience, as Nola fights for her family against supernatural odds. After losing Nora, he escapes with the child. He found himself magically on the shore of the village of Nola, with blood still on his hands. Ninzon looked at the baby and called him Zankebu, which means blood of the sea. He then swore never to return to the river again. Now 18 years have passed, and Zon has grown into a strong young man, but his life was not like that of the other children around him. He was forbidden by his father to go to the river and was not warmly welcomed by the village elders due to his strength and unusual abilities. The villagers told him that his father, Ninzem, was a stranger who had impregnated a mentally unstable Nola woman, who then drowned in the river. Ninzem had made him promise never to go to the river. Even though growing up was difficult, he became a strong young man known for his adventurous spirit and generous heart, and he was popular among his peers. Zon always had a recurring dream, he saw flashes of himself in a black hole, flashes of him wearing a crown, disturbing scenes of a woman screaming on a battlefield where a man lay dead, and an eerie humming in the background. Zon told his father, Ninzem, about this dream, but Ninzem said that as long as Zon promised not to go to the river and never hum the melody, everything would be fine. One evening, Zon was playing a game with his friends, the loser of the game would be blindfolded and taken to one of the players' homes. Unbeknownst to Zon, his friends planned to take him to the river he always refused to visit, to find out the reason why. He eventually lost the game and was blindfolded and carried by his friends, who threw him into the river. He quickly got up, incredulous, and removed the blindfold. He shouted, you know my father made me swear never to come to this river, why would you do this? Before he could finish his speech, he suddenly heard angelic noises coming from the river. Guys, do you hear that? Zon said. Heads suddenly emerged from the surface of the water, getting closer to him. As they approached, he saw they were warrior mermaids. His friends screamed, Zon, get out of the water. But before he could move, the humming depths appeared below him and swallowed him. The mermaid searched the water, confused, but couldn't find him. They glanced at Zon's friends, then dove back into the water. Zon's friends ran to the village to inform Ninzem of what had happened. Ninzem, the river and the mermaid swallowed Zon. Ninzem immediately stood up and rushed to the river, diving headfirst into the water. But before he could go further, he was ambushed and captured by the mermaids. Zon, meanwhile, found himself on a shore with a woman watching him. Oh, it's not possible, it's real. Our king has arrived, she cried. Zon, confused, looked around. Where am I? This place feels familiar. Who are you? he asked. I am Solia, guardian of the sea. I am here to guide you to the city, the woman replied. Another woman appeared in the distance, and Solia turned to her. Go tell Nola and the city that our king has arrived, Solia said. The woman turned around and ran in the direction she came from. Zon, shocked and filled with excitement, said, Do you mean Nola, my mother? with a smile and eyes brimming with tears. Yes, Solia replied. 
Zon jumped to his feet, eager. Let's go see her. Take me to her, Zon said. I certainly will, Solia replied. But before he could go any further, a crowd of women approached them, shouting, Our king is here. Our king is here. He was pulled in every direction, but he held on tightly to Solia as he made his way to the city. Zon marveled at the beauty and unrealistic architecture of the city. Solia led him to a room where a beautiful woman was standing impatiently by the bed. As soon as she saw Zon, she placed her hands over her mouth and began to cry. Mom, is it you? Zon said. Nola wept and ran toward Zon, hugging him tightly. I've missed you so much, my little king, Nola said, tears streaming down her cheeks. Dad said you were gone, but I always knew you were hidden somewhere. I saw you in my dreams, mom. I missed you, Zon said. Nola looked at his face and touched his head. I was saved by the Queen of Light and Life. She kept me alive after the incident on the day of your birth. I always dreamed of this day when I would reunite with my little king. How is your father? Nola asked. Father is safe in the village. He always told me never to go to the village river, even though I told him about my strange dreams. He misses you, and he never goes there because of you, Zon said. What strange dream? Nola asked. Mom, I see you with a man on the battlefield. He is lying on the ground, and you're screaming. There's a strange humming that Dad told me never to sing again, Zon replied. Nola looked at Zon with sympathy and understanding. I am so sorry you had to go through that alone. We have much to discuss, but we must go see the queen. She is waiting for you, Nola said. They both walked through the city, with people shouting as they passed. They arrived at the palace where the queen sat majestically on the throne, surrounded by her princesses. Zon approached the queen and knelt. I am Zon Ku, son of Nola, the seed of Nina. I have honored your request. Here I am, the queen looked at Zon, smiled, and said, Zon, named after your mother's blood, you have been summoned to take your place as the king of the kingdom of Soruis and to marry one of my daughters. Zon looked at his mother, then at the queen. Nola spoke, my queen, isn't it a bit too soon? I think he should have some time to know and get used to the people here. The queen looked at Nola with a sympathetic smile. There is no more time, my daughter. He will be crowned our king and will bring us back to the surface. Then he can do as he wishes. While the queen was still speaking, a guard rushed into the palace. My queen, Molioka is here, and she has a prisoner, Ninzum, all tied up with his army. Upon hearing this, Zon ran out of the palace, followed by Nola and the Sarui's army. As they ran, flashes of his dream came to his mind. When they all arrived at the shore, they found Malioka and her army with Ninzam kneeling, bound before them. Malioka raised her sword. We will not let a peasant, the son of a traitor and an ignorant girl, rule over us. Surrender the throne, or Ninzam, your father, dies. Everyone watched in silence. Then Nola looked at Zon and stepped toward him. She touched his face, gazing into his eyes. Whatever happens, my son, we hold our destinies in our hands. Do what your heart tells you, Nola said. Zon looked at Molioka and her army, furious. He stepped forward, standing right in front of her, looking her straight in the eyes. What do you want, my queen? he asked. Malioka was intimidated and confused. She had not expected such a response from Zon. I want the rightful king, she stammered. Zon continued to stare at her without saying a word, which caused her to avert her eyes. A Maman soldier saw this and tried to approach Zon, but before he could get any closer, 
the humming depths rose from the sea and swallowed him. Weak cries were heard from the humming depths, and a lifeless version of the soldier was cast out. The Saruis and sea people cried out in terror. Zon took Molioka by the hands and led her to the edge of the sea. I never chose to be king. I never asked for this. I never decided what dream I wanted to see, and I never wanted this life, which is a burden to me. I never asked the seas to sing me melodies. But the one thing I will always choose is to be loyal to everything I love, he said. Molioka looked at him curiously. I do all this to protect the sea people and the waters too, Molioka said. Zon held her hands and said, then let's do it. We shouldn't kill others loved ones to protect our own. Let my father go. The sea roared, adding emphasis and power to Zon's words. As the sea began to untie them, Zon heard the humming again, but only he could hear it. Zon joined the humming melody and began to hum. Soon, everyone started to sing, and the sound grew louder and louder. The humming depths enveloped the entire kingdom, darkening the sky with shadows, and everyone lay down on the ground. Zon continued humming the song, and within seconds, he saw a light above the darkness, it was the sun. Finally, the kingdom of Saruiz had surfaced. The people of the Saruiz kingdom screamed and shouted with joy. Nola ran to Ninzem, untied him, and kissed him passionately. I missed you so much, my precious, Nola said. Ninzom looked at Nola. I am the luckiest woman in the world. Who would have thought an ignorant little girl would one day live such a life? Zon was carried on the shoulders of the Saruis and sea people. As he looked into the distance, he could see his village miles away, now separated by vast waters. One step, whether good or bad, can make the sea rise from a river, he said to himself. Zon was carried by the Saruis and sea people toward the palace, while the people shouted, Our king has saved us. Zon, our king, has saved us. The Queen of Light called Nola and Molioka, and the three queens crowned him and granted him the title of king. Stories spread across the villages and the world about the rebirth of a kingdom once sunk in the abyss of disunity. The tales of Nola and the different ways people described her spread throughout the kingdom. Nola, the seductress, had inscribed her name in the history of a kingdom she had unknowingly freed.